the turbulence of the past 18 months has seen unprecedented change in the cross-border payments industry. This comes, of course, as millions of people and businesses across the world have been battered by the pandemic. Well, in China, two big developments have emerged in cross-border payments, with foreign payment companies focusing on the country's payment market and an emerging picture of the potential future directions for different unlicensed companies. Let's talk now to Sheng Ji, Vice General Manager and CIO at Zhouju Commercial Bank, for more insights into these trends and opportunities in China. It's very good to see you. So, in your opinion, what are the trends in cross-border payment industry? What are you noticing? Well, I believe there are two trends regarding China cross-border payment industry. The first trend is foreign institution is focusing on cross-border payment industry. In 2019, PayPal acquired 70% share of domestic payment company Guo Fubao Information Technology Company through PayPal Information Technology Shanghai Company. The acquisition has been approved by the central bank and PayPal has become the first foreign institution to enter China payment market. The second trend is that there will be different future directions for different unlicensed companies. After the central bank suspended the application for payment license in 2015, it's very difficult for payment companies to apply payment license in China. For small and medium-sized non-licensed payment institution, due to their own size and income constraints, they lack enough funds to support their license purchasing. So, the future direction for those institutions is likely to be transformation. Cheng, when, when people talk about cross-border payment, blockchain technology is being constantly brought up in connect with this subject. What is your opinion on blockchain technology? Okay. In recent years, China has been promoting the blockchain technology with the characteristics of shareage and distributed architecture. Blockchain can greatly improve the efficiency of cross-border payment. At the same time, the point-to-point -point mode can greatly reduce the cost of cross-border payment. It also has the advantage of data security. It's expected that more and more blockchain plus cross-border payment projects will be implemented in the upcoming future. And we know that the pandemic has taken the world by surprise, but how do you view the impact of that pandemic on China's own cross-border payment industry? Mm -hmm. Indeed, COVID-19 has greatly changed our ways of living, working, consuming, learning, even thinking by surprise. Due to the pandemic quarantine, the travel across regions has been restricted. But the people's daily consumption and industrial production must continue. Cross-border cross e-commerce has, has seized the opportunity according to the data released by China e-bond research institution. Under the pandemic, China's cross-border e-commerce industry is still growing against the shrinking global economy. The Development of cross-border e-commerce due to the epidemic brought a great opportunity to these payment companies, which are closely integrated with them. Cross-border e-commerce has been a hot topic in recent years. Uh, Cheng, what is your insight on the development of China's cross-border e-commerce industry? Uh, well, the data clearly shows that China's cross-border e-commerce industry has become one of the dynamic forces to its economic growth. In 2020, the scale of China's cross-border e-commerce market was 12.5 trillion yuan, accounting for 38% of the total import and export value of that year. 
it's estimated that the scale of China's cross-border e-commerce market will continue to grow this year. So I believe that China's cross-border e-commerce industry will have a very promising future. And as China's cross-border e-commerce industry is constantly changing, what kind of influence do you think it's likely to have on the cross-border payment industry? Well, uh, the development of trade value will lead to the development of finance activities. And the influence of the pandemic, cross-border e-commerce has shown an unstoppable development momentum, which also provides great development space for cross-border payment companies, which are closely integrated with it. The cross-border payment companies are already working with e-commerce platforms, and as they progress with their cooperation, it will result to the innovation of more effective, competitive, and secure payment solutions. You mentioned that the e-commerce industry has brought opportunities for cross-board payment companies. Are there any other industries that you see might bring the same opportunity for cross-board payment companies in the future? Okay. Yes, besides the e-commerce industry, we noticed that traveling abroad and studying abroad have become two major cross-border consumption forces. China is the world's largest South country of outbound tourists and tourism consumption. In terms of studying abroad, according to the data of the Ministry of Education, there is a trend of younger students to study abroad in recent years. So the market demands in these two industries are very significant. Unfortunately, with the spread of the pandemic worldwide, the global tourism and study abroad markets are severely damaged. However, the pandemic will not have a fundamental impact on these markets. It's expected that in the upcoming future, the tourism and the study abroad market will gradually recover and further bring a greater development for the cross-board payment market. And Chen, it does appear that a lot of Chinese companies are starting to set up their bases outside China. But do you think that this might bring more opportunities for the cross-border industry as well? Uh, yes, I believe so. As a world factory, China has gained a lot of experience during the course of its development. China now has sufficient capability in product design, producing, and distribution fields. While this brings us a competitive price advantage, it also delivers satisfactory to the product's initial design, quality, and con con customization. Besides exporting the physical products, China has been exporting its cultural and financial products as well. In recent years, China has issued a series of policies to support companies to go out. Therefore, more small and medium-sized enterprises take overseas markets as their strategic goals and seek new business opportunities. At the same time, major payment companies also provide comprehensive support for small and medium-sized enterprises. This trend will increase the volume of cross-border transactions and promote the development of cross-border payment industry. Well, sadly, time is of the essence, but thank you very much, uh, Cheng Ji, Vice General Manager and CIO at Choju Commercial Bank, for your thoughts and insights today. And please enjoy Cybos 2021. Thank you very much.